Facing high veterinary bills, unemployed pet parents during the pandemic, they're making some tough choices. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications so you don't miss an update. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Right now, there are thousands of people around the world having to make some really difficult choices. They've been affected by the pandemic. So many millions of people around the world are unemployed. They lack the ability to pay uh, for some basics. You know, never mind feeding themselves, you know, veterinary care, which is increasingly become expensive. And they've got to make that choice. Like, do, you know, do you shell out the dollars, you know, say little Tula here, she's been attacked by another animal, seriously injured, do I rush her off to the veterinary emergency vet clinic, get all this emergency care, or do I, you know, feed my family? A family from BC was recently interviewed in the news. Their cat Dobie was injured from a car accident. Um, they were facing a $3,000 initial emergency fee, another $3,000 to have a CT scan, a feeding tube put in place, and then another approximately $8,000 uh, to repair all the fractures. And you're looking at a $14,000 veterinary bill. But they've lost half their income um, being unemployed during the pandemic and they've got to make that really really difficult choice like do you put food on the table do you feed your family or do you pay this emergency urgent care for the care of your animal what did they choose I mean, they chose their pet veterinary fees have increasingly risen the cost of veterinary care uh, has gone up markedly it's reported that in british columbia the average uh, person who has a pet spends approximately twelve hundred dollars a year just on veterinary care you know the national average is just under a thousand but as many of you know you know just one single emergency surgery you know can run upwards of ten thousand dollars so what do you do i mean this family here they you know able to scrape up the money uh, they actually had their daughter cast in some of her education savings to help them pay some of the veterinary bills you know, but they're still, I mean, they're, they're struggling, right? Because they only have half their income. There are some animal protection societies that run lower cost veterinary clinics, you know, but one that's reported in one of the suburbs of Vancouver, you know, they have an increase, 50% increase in applications and they're just overwhelmed with demands. We've got all these people that are now unemployed. You know, they can barely just, they can't even make ends meet. And now they've got to come up with, you know, this expensive veterinary care and I mean, it's hard. Like, what do you do? I know what I would do, and I can pretty much guess what the bulk of you guys would do. I mean, you're gonna figure a way uh, to pay for your dogs, for your cats. But it doesn't mean it's hard, and I'm not sort of a good example, right? Because I can do a bunch of my own care, and I'm hoping you're learning some stuff from this channel so you can provide some of your own care. But still, I mean, if there's an emergency surgery, you know, a little tool has been in a horrible bite, she's gonna need, you know, she's got a fracture, so she's got a hernia, you know, she's got a punctured lung, like she's gonna need urgent immersion care. It's gonna add up, easy add up to thousands of dollars. And I just, for so many people, like it's just, it's not an option. Like how, what do you do? For sure it's hard times. Fortunately, I mean, if I can give any perspective, I mean, this pandemic is gonna pass. We've been through other ones throughout human history, and guess what? They always pass. So right now, it's just kind of sort of hanging on, dealing with what you have, and hoping that there are other, you know, the other other sources of income. If your animal gets seriously hurt and you're in a position where you can't afford it, you're going to talk to your veterinarian about things like payment plans. Are there, are there certain things they can do to lower the cost, knowing, especially if you've been a good client, you've had a great history of paying uh, for veterinary fees. And then, you know, looking into um, some other animal shelters, animal societies that may offer subsidized veterinary care if you're in that position. Regardless, it's hard. And if you're in a position to help, you know, you, you are familiar with, with people 
that need urgent veterinary care, if you can help them, I think that would be awesome too. So hopefully I'm not in that little position. I'm hoping you stay healthy, little poodle, and you stay away from any wild critters outside. I'm sure you may have seen the video a few weeks ago. A little poodle got herself attacked. She's healed well, as you can see. And thanks for watching. It's Dr. Jones. Thanks so much for watching this edition on Veterinary Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.